Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. Well, Primax workers are picketing after dozens of employees tested positive for COVID-19. Those workers have been out at Primax LLC since 4.30 this morning. They're demanding a change after 31 employees recently tested positive for coronavirus. Their first case was confirmed on June 10th. Primax is a pistachio processor in Wasco. Those workers on strike want to be treated better. Uh, there's supposed to be protections for workers, and Primex Farms needs to honor these workers and, and, and really treat these workers as essential workers uh, like they're supposed to be and not value their production. They need, to, they need to value the workers, the essential workers that are doing the work for this company and, uh, and really provide them the protection they deserve, provide them the information that they deserve. You know, and there's so much, you know, really the workers are, are just had it up to here because they're telling one story and they're not telling, they're not really telling what's happening. The workers have a list of demands they want to be met. Now, according to the company, they're now rolling out new requirements at work, including face masks. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom is streaming live today to give an update on the coronavirus crisis here in our state. Today, he will be talking about the our state's response to the pandemic. Well. Let's take it over to him and hear what he has to say. As you can see from this slide, a slide that's become familiar for those that have taken the time to watch these presentations, uh, this slide reflect, uh, represents the total number of tests and the positivity rate here in the state of California. Again, positivity rate is the number of people, the percentage of people that tested positive that were tested uh, in the state. The first 14 days and the two numbers you see on this slide, 40 0.8% and 5.1% uh, represent uh, the first 14-day cohort uh, of positivity. Again, most of the people in the beginning of this pandemic that uh, went to seek testing were symptomatic, so it's not surprising those numbers in the beginning of this pandemic were so high. The blue bar you see represented on the slide of the total number of tests. So we have significantly increased the ramp of testing and you've seen a significant decrease in the positivity rate. But I reminded you yesterday, I'll remind you again today, point of caution. The positivity rate has begun to increase over the course of the last few weeks. It's 5.1 percent now positivity rate over the last 14 days. Uh, what I'm not sharing in terms of a slide but want to share with you in a transparent way is a 5.6 percent positivity rate in the last seven days. So this slide represents the last 14 days, but the positivity rate is north of the 5.1%, again, 5.6% uh, in the last seven days. Total number of cases, yesterday we had a record high, 7,149 people that tested positive for COVID-19. You'll see today uh, that number dropped to 5,349, still higher than we would like it to be, uh, still a point of concern. Yesterday, we tested a record number of people. Over 101,000 people were tested in the state of California, now north of 3.7 million, roughly 3.7 million people have been tested since the beginning of this pandemic. We've averaged over the last seven days 88,000 tests in the state of California. Uh, while that is significant, it's not where we need to be. We need to continue to increase our testing, uh, continue to increase our community, what we refer to as surveillance, so we can get a better handle uh, of the total number of positive cases uh, and understand the nuances between those with symptoms, those that are asymptomatic, without symptoms, and those that are pre-symptomatic. Uh, but these cases you just heard Governor Gavin Newsom talking about the state's the response to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, here in California. Now you can continue watching Governor Newsom's whole live stream on our Facebook page days. and on our website, so, kget.com. Well, a new record for the number of people testing positive for coronavirus in one day. According to NBC News tracking data, there were more than 45,500 COVID-19 cases yesterday. That tops the previous highest daily count from April 26 by more than 9,000 cases. The World Health Organization reported its single-day record on Sunday with more than 183,000 new cases worldwide. 
Health experts say the resurgence in cases in southern and western states can be traced to Memorial Day when many officials began loosening lockdowns and reopening businesses. Well, now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. One more has died from COVID-19. That brings our death total to 64. Kern Public Health reports 74 new cases today, bringing that total to over 4,100. Over 2,900 people have recovered. Over 1,000 are recovering at home and 70 are in the hospital. Over 48,000 tests have come back negative and a little less than 700 tests are still pending. Well, a member of the Bakersfield City School District Ed Center has tested positive for coronavirus. The district was notified yesterday about that positive case. Kern Public Health is currently tracing and contacting anyone who may have been exposed. According to the district, human resources are also reaching out to those employees exposed. Now, the district will be closed until Monday for a deep cleaning. And a new travel advisory to be aware of. Wednesday, the governors of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut announced that people from places where COVID-19 are on the rise will have to quarantine for two weeks if they travel to their states. The travel advisory went into effect at midnight and includes nine states that have a positive test rate higher than 10 per 100,000 residents over a seven-day average. Right now, some of the states on that list are North and South Carolina, Texas, Washington, Arizona, and Florida. California is not on that list yet. There will be an alert message on highways, airports, websites, and social media about the travel advisory. Violators can be fined up to $10,000 if they cause harm by not quarantining. Well, police reform in the United States Senate is dead for now. Democrats on Wednesday blocked a vote to begin negotiations on a GOP bill. Democrat leaders called Republicans' proposal inadequate. Republicans wanted incentives for police departments to make changes, including limiting chokeholds, but that wasn't enough. Democrats wanted federal mandates and an overhaul of so-called qualified immunity. Now federal police reform in the wake of George Floyd's death is in question. Two weeks ago, it was implied the Senate would have blood on our hands if we didn't take up police reform. Now Democrats say Senator Scott and 48 other senators have blood on our hands because we are trying to take up police reform. Three senators, Democrats Joe Manchin and Doug Jones and independent Angus King, crossed party lines to vote in favor of the Republican bill. House Democrats plan to bring their own policing proposal to vote today. Well, now to a battle over Bakersfield's budget. The city council heard from dozens of passionate community members before voting on the $628 million budget. Before the meeting started yesterday, demonstrators gathered outside City Hall to send a message to council members to vote against the proposed $628 million budget. Of that, roughly $120 million will go towards the Bakersfield Police Department, a 10% increase from last year because of new funding from Measure N. With the council's approval, the department is expected to add 44 positions over the next year, including an additional 29 sworn officers. But several people at the meeting were against that. We are asking you to defund BPD and adopt the budget that we've created that reflects what people in Bakersfield actually want. We need affordable housing. We need more access to mental health services. We need more intervention services, substance abuse. Um, we need better education systems. So we are here, in case you never heard this before, to tell you to defund the police department and help our communities. I'm tired of seeing solutions to homelessness be increased police. I'm tired of seeing solutions to mental health crises be increased police. We need to start putting money in other places. We have what feels like a once in a lifetime chance to make a change. And if you don't want to do your job and listen to the people that I'm going to politely ask, resign. City Manager Christian Clegg said he and city staff reviewed proposals from the People's Budget BACO calling for the city to divest from police and invest in underserved communities. Clegg says $25 million from Measure N is allocated for homelessness, housing and economic development, another $30 million for local parks. Our budget in many areas is actually very well aligned with the recommendations that are being made. Measure end funding is going towards our law enforcement uh, being able to have the staff to do more community engagement, more proactive community policing to get at our quality assurance programs and so forth. 
The council unanimously approved that budget. Well, today we are seeing some very hot weather as we have for the past couple of days. Let's send things over to Kevin Shrek with a look outdoors. And we'll take you outside right now. Here's a look at our uh, temperature right now. 93 in Bakersfield. We've got a west wind at 7 miles per hour. Uh, so definitely warming up. Overnight, we're at 76 above the normal of 67. Normal high 93 today. And the record of 112 was set back in 1957. Here's a look at temperatures. And we're in the 90s in all areas of the valley. And we've got 82 in Fraser Park, 84 in Tehachapi, 93 for Lake Isabella, and nearing the century mark for Ridgecrest. Here's a look at the satellite and radar, and not much to show you. We did see some high clouds this morning. Some of that still remains out in the desert and uh, down to the south into Los Angeles. We're also starting to see some thunderstorms fire up into central Nevada, and we'll see some along the Sierra Crest this afternoon. Temperature-wise, going to be hot all around. 94 in Sacramento, 104 in Fresno, 70 south. Look at Phoenix today, 110, scorching there. The ridge isn't going to break down here for the next few days. We're still going to keep it hot. We have a weak disturbance just to the north of us, and that's allowing for possibly a few thunderstorms uh, to pop up this afternoon. And you can see that in our 18-hour future cast along the Sierra Crest and into central Nevada this afternoon. And the thunderstorm forecast now is lifted north of the Kern County area and to the east in Salt Lake under the gun for seeing thunderstorms this afternoon as well. I want to talk about national weather because you may have heard about this. Have you heard about the Sierra dust storm? The largest plume, they say, in 50 50 years from the Sierra Sahara and it is about 5,000 miles away and what is happening is with the jet stream we are seeing this dust make its way into the United States today and it started yesterday so a lot of dust on the eastern seaboard uh, again all coming from the Sahara so an interesting phenomenon that we're seeing and all being driven uh, from a big ridge of high pressure out in the Atlantic here's a look at our temperatures for today 103 in Bakersfield 105 in Delano 101 in Taft for the mountains in the Kern River Valley 89 in Fraser Park 92 in Tehachapi near 100 for the Kern River Valley Lake Isabel at 100 101 in Kernville and then for the desert sunny and hot Ridgecrest at 107 One 103 tomorrow and then 105 on Saturday. We will see a cool down on Monday in the mid 80s, right back in the 90s, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week for the mountains, keeping in the 90s through Saturday. But you'll also get a pretty good cool down here, 70 on Monday, then back near 80 by Wednesday. And for the Kern River Valley forecast, triple digits through at least Saturday, but a big cool down, 103 Saturday, 89 by Sunday, lower 80s on Monday. That's look at your forecast, Nicole. Back over to you. Well, we're still dealing with aftershocks from a large earthquake in Inyo County that rattled more than a few windows here in Kern County, southeast of Lone Pine, at 1040 yesterday morning. The U.S. Geological Survey places the epicenter about three miles underneath Owens Lake. The quake comes two days after a 4.6 earthquake hit in the same area, which USGS scientists say is now considered a foreshock. 17 aftershocks followed, the strongest another 4.6, hitting just minutes after that big one. Well, here at home, the intensity of shock waves from the earthquake varied depending on where you were at the time of that tembler, but still many were shaken up by that quake. A swinging chandelier encapsulates how one local woman saw the jolt yesterday. She was at home in southwest Bakersfield on a Zoom call when it happened. I was sitting at my desk preparing for a client meeting on a Zoom, and all of a sudden, my desk started moving, shaking, and uh, I felt like I was on a boat. I looked at my chandelier in the hallway, or the, the entryway, and we are having an earthquake. Another person, Arthur Gray, was parked at an East Bakersfield fast trip when he felt the ground shake. He and his son were both shocked by the experience. As far as auto, um, auto stabilizers, and as the earthquake was going on, even though it was only a few seconds, the car automatic stabilizers just started going crazy. And this car started bouncing and trying to reposition itself and everything. And my 12-year-old son, he jumped up and was like, Dad, Dad, what's going on? Just a reminder, you can download the My Shake Alert app to get earthquake warnings on your phone. It's available for iOS and Android phones. You can also sign up for disaster alerts from Kern County's emergency services. Just go to readykern.com. Well, now to a fire in East Bakersfield that sent huge plumes of smoke into the sky. That fire started in the garage of a vacant home just before 8 o'clock last night. This is in the 1900 block of Haley Street. 
Firefighters were able to stop the flames before they engulfed a neighboring home. No injuries were reported. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Well, 4th of July may look different for most this year due to COVID-19, but the dangers of handling fireworks at home remains. All too often, backyard Independence Day celebrations end with a trip to the hospital. So to stay safe, the Consumer Product Safety Commission conducted a demonstration to show off how dangerous fireworks can be if handled the wrong way. Experts say it's important not to let children play or ignite sparklers as they can get hot enough to melt metal. Also, never point or throw fireworks at anyone or place any part of your body directly over where it is lighted. Nearly 10,000 injuries and 12 firework-related deaths took place in 2019. For more of those safety tips, visit cpsc.gov. Now you can report illegal firework activity in Kern County. According to Kern County Fire, dispatchers and their website have received over 3,000 reports within the past nine days. Last weekend alone, over 2,000 reports. That's in comparison to the same weekend last year where dispatchers received less than two dozen reports. That's a 5,500% increase in illegal firework activity this year. Now you can report illegal firework activity to kerncountyfire.org. Well, the search continues for a man who went missing in the Kern River over Father's Day weekend. The family of David Godinez tells 17 News he disappeared at Cowflat Creek Saturday. The father of three was last seen by his youngest daughter when he went into the river and never came out. The family is from Los Angeles and says they came to the river for Father's Day because Godinez loves nature. Despite searching on the ground and using a helicopter, search and rescue have been unable to find Godinez. Well, we now know the names of two people killed in a double homicide in Bakersfield. According to Kern County Sheriff's Office, they recovered two bodies back on June 11th off of State Road just east of Highway 99. KCSO says they've identified those individuals as 41-year-old Melissa Ann McCutcheon and 35-year-old Daniel Reyna Paloza. According to officers, the 41-year-old was shot by another at the 5900 block of State Road. She died of a gunshot wound to the chest. Now that case is still under investigation. And new information on a teen who was shot and killed in McFarland. Delano Police Department has identified the homicide suspect, homicide victim as 18-year-old Renee Angel Garcia Rodriguez. According to DPD, Rodriguez was shot in his abdomen last Tuesday on the 1600 block of Ellington Street. That's right off of Highway 99. DPD says the 18-year-old was taken to the hospital in a private vehicle but later died. Right now, DPD says they have no suspects. Anyone with any information is asked to contact them at 721-3369. Now, in your 17 court watch, a former teacher's aide pleaded no contest to a charge of committing a lewd or lascivious act with a child 14 or 15 years old. Steve Gonzalez was 45 when he was arrested in February of 2019 after being accused of engaging in sexual conduct with a child. At the time, he worked as an aide in a special education class at Hart Elementary School in Bakersfield. Gonzalez faces 180 days in jail, three years felony probation, and will be required to register as a sex offender. Prosecutors say the plea deal was made after consulting with the victim's family. Police said the victim did not attend the school. Sentencing is scheduled for July 23rd. Now, due in court today, a father accused of endangering and torturing his own child. Earlier this month, KCSO deputies performed a welfare check on a seven-year-old that was possibly being abused after neighbors said they saw the child bound at the wrists and ankles. That's exactly what deputies say they found when they arrived at the home on Beardsley Avenue. KCSO says an investigation revealed the father William Davis would often tie the child up when he went out and regularly hit that child. Davis was arrested on June 23rd. He's due in court this afternoon at 3 p.m. And just a reminder, if you suspect child abuse or neglect, you can report it at 631-6011. Many of the mandated reporters in child, children's lives have been absent for months now with those stay-at-home orders in effect and schools closed since March. Experts fear this could lead to child abuse going unnoticed and underreported. We'll also do in court Abel Almanza, the man accused in a road rage crash last weekend. Now this happened last week. This happened last Tuesday morning on South H near Hosking Road. 
BPD says Almanza had been trying to run another car off the road along Highway 99 once the two cars got off the freeway. BPD says Almanza rammed the other car from behind, forcing it into the canal. Police arrested Almanza a short time later. Now he's set to be due in court later today. A local high school athlete who passed away unexpectedly last weekend is being remembered as a gentle giant. Wyatt Birch was a member of the North High football team and a wrestler. His coach, Brady Garner, says Birch turned 17 on Friday and went hiking with friends in Los Angeles on Sunday to celebrate his birthday. At the end of the hike, he collapsed and died from medical complications. He was that guy that helped no matter what. It didn't matter who you were, he would step up and help you and he was just, he was always there for you. Um, he would call and check on coaches and say, hey, you guys doing okay? He was, he was just that kid that, you know, you love. He was the gentle giant. GoFundMe has been set up to help Wyatt Birch's family with medical expenses. You can find a link on our website, kget.com. Just click on the hot link icon.